In three weeks, there will be a huge celebration in Batavia to mark the 150th anniversary of the State School for the Blind. And there is also a big push to find alumni to return to the school for the sequincentennial. Is that how you say it? Sesquicentennial. Sesquicentennial. That's right. As we hear from our Dave McKinley tonight, who went to see for himself the important work that continues after a century and a half in this Two on Your Side original story. As this school turns 150, its Alumni Association is also marking its 100th anniversary. It's kind of special in that it's a significant number. Richard and Carlene Fiorello of Tonawanda attended the school in the 1960s, and they are beating the bushes to find as many alumni as possible for this year's reunion. We'd really like to take the opportunity to invite, invite people who haven't come in a number of years, or if you have a friend who attended the uh, School for the Blind in Batavia um, who's never come, this would be a good time to consider it. Part of the weekend long reunion in June will involve a picnic with the current crop of students. Who do you think gets more out of that? Oh, I think the alumni. <laughs> no doubt, the alumni. Barb Lemon is the current superintendent of the school and has been for five years. They mentor the kids. It's nice to see younger kids and, and it, it's nice to do what we can do and to encourage them. For those who haven't been back in a long time, some things will be quite different. First of all, there are a lot less kids, only 57, 40 of whom, because they live more than 50 miles away, stay here five days a week in dormitories, far more modern than these ones, which some of the more senior alumni might remember. Student enrollment dropped here over the last generation, due in part to a move to mainstream students with disabilities into public schools as part of a push toward inclusion. Did the push for inclusion imperil places like this? Yes, yes, it changed, it changed the way we did business here. And it changed the very makeup of the student body from the days when Richard and Carlene attended. That alumni group, they, their only disability is blindness, was their disability. Now we've taken students that have an additional disability to the blindness. So to be qualified to come into our school, you have to have be blind, legally blind, and also have an additional disability. So if a kid is just blind, they don't come to school they here? They normally would not come to school here. Normally, normally that hopefully, their regular school district would be able to meet their needs. But returning alumni will find other things which have not changed. When they first enter the building, they're going to tell you exactly how many steps are outside. How many steps are at the front of the building? I think it's 11. <laughs> Might be 10. There are still canes outside the classrooms here, and while teaching methods have changed, there is one consistency in the curriculum as old as the school itself. Find the one that is the letter B and move it to the top. <gasps> B! Braille's their literacy. And despite advances in technology, to not teach it would be a disservice. That would be like not teaching them to be literate. So that's the piece that our students need to learn a special skill, as special as this place. There was this one little guy about eight years old, blind since birth, and he was trying so hard. What is it? <gasps> oh! Good, keep on moving two hands together. And I couldn't help but think that before schools like this, he might have been relegated to sitting on a sidewalk with a tin cup. That's a distinct possibility, or he would have been just relegated to living in his parents' home. There is one more thing which has not wavered in 150 years, at this place whose story is still unfolding. And that is that around here, being blind never stopped anyone from achieving. It did not stop them. It will not stop him, nor her, nor the current generation of those who carry on a century and a half long tradition in their endeavor to teach the sightless to see. Use a searching hand, find the top, good. Excellent. There was a long ago movie made about a teacher who taught a deaf, mute, and blind Helen Keller to communicate. It was called The Miracle Worker. Now, at the slight risk of sounding trite, we could tell you that after 150 years, there is a place here in western New York where they still work miracles every day. And it was our privilege, really, to have been able to see that for ourselves. Dave McKinley, Channel 2 News. Wonderful story, Dave. Beautifully told, Dave, as usual. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's a, a great reminder to all of us yes. the special gift that those teachers have for communicating with those students and really giving them the gift to live life and be in the world. And really, as you can see, those two older graduates really thrive. Amazing, too. Amazing.